In this tutorial we're going to give you an overview of the clip art that is included with Aspire. We're going to show you where the clip art is located and give you a quick guide on how to import and load them into the software. We'll also show you some of the special features that some of the files have integrated within them. Now Aspire comes with over 650 individual designs which come in various styles equating to 1400 pieces of clip art. There are three ways that you can install the free clip art. Now, if you have a product installation USB, you can simply download the clip art installer from there. That will download all of the clip art at once to the hard drive of your PC, and you will find the clip art located within your public documents. So, where is the public documents? You go to your computer, C drive, users, public public documents, Vetric files and then you'll have a folder in there called clip art and this has all of the folders that house uh, the different types of clip arts that you have available to your product. If you don't have a product installation USB that's not a problem because when you purchase the software you would have been invited to join Vinco and this is where you can access your license details, install your software along with the clip art and free project files. So you need to go over to portal.vetric.com. Here you simply enter in your login information and then sign in. Once you've signed in, you're then able to view your downloads. This is where you can access your products, your licenses and your clip art. Not only that, we can also access many of the free projects that get updated here on a monthly basis. When you go to view downloads, you'll be displayed the products that you've purchased in which you could go and simply view the license and download the product. Here you have your main product installer for you to download and then the clip art is divided up into mini little packs and you're going to need to download each one of these individually if you want the entire set of free clip art. For example, to download the Weaves Clip Art Pack, I can simply press download and then that will download the executable for me, in which case I can go and open that up and simply run through the actual Vectric Clip Art Setup Wizard. Here I'd simply press next. You need to read the license agreement and then accept that by using the I agree option and then that will install that Weaves clip art pack into my C drive users public documents vetric files clip art. That's that folder that I showed you earlier. And you could simply finish off the install and download uh, the next clip art that you'd like to put in. Alternatively, you can download the free clip art directly into an open session of your software, providing that you have internet access and are logged in to your Vinco account. So here we are in the clip art tab of my software. The top half shows me the folders for the clip art that I've installed. The lower half displays the thumbnails for the clip art to make it easier for me to search through. You can see I have all of these different folders like so. Now we can see that the cloud button isn't currently switched on, which means that I'm only viewing clip art in the lower half of my clip art tab that I've installed onto my system. Now if I switch that on, then the software will update that to display any clip art that I've not yet installed. And you can see that's indicated by a greyed out corner with an arrow pointing down. And this is telling us that we are able to install this clip art again, providing that we have internet access. So to download any clip art that you don't currently have installed on your system, you can simply go to whichever piece you like the look of. Uh, if it's got a grey corner with an arrow pointing down, you can simply right click on that and use the option here to download. If you're not currently logged in to your Vinco account via the software, then this message will pop up and you can simply use this option here to log in and refresh. 
that's going to take you to Vinco, in which case you can simply enter in your email address, uh, enter in your password and then simply sign in and then that should flag up a message to say congratulations you've successfully linked your software with your Vinco account. In which case then what we could do is just wait a moment for the software to refresh itself where we could simply use this refresh option here and then a message will pop up to say that we are logged in we can close there and then we can right click use the download option it will go green to say it's downloading and then it will disappear as soon as it's downloaded and when it downloads the clip art does it to the same public document folder that I showed you earlier not only can we just right mouse click uh, to download our clipper, but what we can do is just simply take it and just drag it in and then you'll notice it'll go green and then it's downloaded that for you. So now that we've spoke about how to install the clipper, let's take a look at the actual clipper itself. So we'll create a new file, 6 by 6 by 3 eighths of an inch. So now that you have installed your clip art, there are many ways that you can bring the clip art into your job space to work with. One way is by opening up the folder where your clip art is located. So I'm in users, public, public documents, Vectric files, clip art, animals, and here I can take that V3M and I can just simply drag that into my job like so and then I can just simply size it, move it around and do what it is that I wanted to do with it. So then let's just take that and press delete on the keyboard. The other option is going into the modeling tab using this option here to import a component or a 3D model. Here again I'm accessing that same folder and I could look at bringing in this bass fish like so by double clicking on that and then moving that into position. Let's just go ahead and delete that. And the third and most convenient option is via the Clipart tab. So the Clipart tab is divided into two areas. We have the top area where we can locate our Clipart. Uh, once we've located Clipart, it will be displayed in these thumbnails at the bottom here, which is useful for us as we're able to see the Clipart before we bring it into our job. So once you've installed your clip art, you can simply use the add folder option and search your way through your system to locate the clip art folder, in which case you can just simply add the folders into your library folders. So I've already done that and I've got a folder here called clip art and this has all of the clip art um, that I've installed onto my machine. And so you can see that when I click through each one of these, I'm displayed the thumbnails for uh, the clip arts that I've got within that folder. Another option, uh, which is more of a temporary option, is by going to your local files. So here again, you can just search through your system um, and then basically work your way through the folders uh, and it will pull out any clip art that you may have in the folders on your computer, in which case again you can select it uh, to bring into your job. Now in terms of the clip art, some of the clip art that is available comes in three styles. So you'd have one that is of the model, one where that model is sat within a dish, and then we have another one where the model is sat within a scalloped recess. To bring clip art into your session, we can simply double click on a piece of clip art we just tile our windows to begin with so you can see the 2D and the 3D view. So double clicking on a piece of clip art will bring that into the centre of your job. We just shift to bring that down and then we're just going to move that up like so. Another way would be to simply drag that into the 2D view or even directly into the 3D view like so. And again we can just simply shrink that down and position that into place. 
And the third option we have is if we right click on our component, we can say import to level, select a level we want to bring our clip art into, and we'll put in level one, and that will bring that into the center of your job, which again, you can size up and move around. So in the modeling tab, I'm just going to apply a zero plane, and we can see we have our raised model, we've got our model within a dish, and we have a recessed uh, model here where the fish is sat within a, a scalloped recessed shape. So I'm just going to take all of these components, holding down shift, I'm just going to delete them using the delete key. I want to go back into the clip art tab. I just want to take a moment to discuss uh, the two folders where we've got weaves and panels and shields. So within these two folders, you'll find clip art that has um, three variants of the same thing. For example, we have weave 12 I, we've got weave 12 uh, double I, and then we've got weave 12 triple I. Okay, now the difference between each of these pieces of clip art is basically the profile that was used to create the clip art. So I is just rounded, uh, double I um, is basically kind of squared, Okay, so it's kind of flat with a slight rounded edge, um, and then the triple I um, has this kind of a groove, Okay, so that's basically the difference between all three um, of those. So now let's have a look at the extra clip art that we have with Aspire. So we can see in my clip art viewer part of the tab that I have extra clip art that is a different colour to the clip art that we were talking about earlier. And a lot of these are dot 3D clip files. Uh, and these are just individual models. Um, quite a lot of these are derived from designandmake.com. And some of these are special files that have the word X at the end of it for example, like this. If I go to the decorative section, we're going to look at this C-scroll X, okay? If I double click on that. So what does the X mean? If we go into the modeling tab, what it enables us to do is view uh, this clip art um, as a grouped entity and it just gives us the ability to break this part down to see how it was made. So to do that we simply right click and use the ungroup option. So here we can see we have a platform component. If I just switch the visibility of these off and that is just that component there. We have another grouped component here called petal. Not only can I see by the word that it says group, I can also see that indicated by this plus icon. And if we just minimize that plus icon, we can see everything uh, that makes up this entire group. So if I right click and use the, un the ungroup option, we can see that I can access each individual part and this is really useful just to see how everything was made. And then obviously we have the C-scroll group at the bottom there. So I'm just going to take all of these that were grouped originally, we're just going to group them back. I'm just going to undraw that group and we're just going to undraw the platform just so we can focus on the C-scroll group right click and we can ungroup that and we can see that uh, we have another sub set of groups also so if we just take all of these select them just uncheck all of those using the shift key and then we'll take a look at just the C scroll group right click ungroup and we can actually see how this C scroll was made so this is really useful from an educational point of view Okay, so that is basically um, any of the clip art files that have an X on the end of it. So let's just take all of those, shift to select them all, and then we're just going to delete it. Put that back in Z, and we're going to go back into our clip art tab, and then let's just look through our part here. Um, for example, let's take the corner post. Again, it's got an X in the name. If we double click on that into the modeling tab, right click, let's ungroup that to see how 
that uh, was built up. Okay, so I've got this round outer and I can take that off. Uh, I've got a wedge, take that off. And the really nice thing about a spire is that what I can do is I can now basically manipulate this clip art. I can even make my own models if I wanted to. And for example, if I took all of these three individual components and grouped them, what I can do then is right click on that and then I could look at saving this out as a clip art in its own right by using the export as 3D clip art option. And then I can save that out as a dot 3D clip file that I can then access at a later date and bring that into uh, my software to work with in future projects. So let's just shift and select those components, delete on the keyboard to delete them. Going back into the clip art tab, okay, so we've got um, a folder here called texture area tiles. Now the texture area tiles section of the clip art folders um, has clip art that's really meant to be used with the texture area tool in order for you to create repeated patterns and all of these um, all of the clip art that's within this folder has been designed specifically so that you can create repeating patterns. For example, if we double click on the egg web here and we're just going to shrink that down using shift and pull in on the control handle, what I can do is just drag that out of my job and with that selected into the modeling tab we could look at applying a texture area um, using that component press apply and that will basically create our patterned component like so. And then when we close out we've got a new component that is basically our texture area component and then it will automatically hide the original component that we use to create that texture area component just so we don't get confused. Now there, I'm not going to go into detail on how um, the texture area component works uh, but there is a tutorial dedicated to this tool uh, that you can find within the tutorial browser. So let's just shift and select both of those components and then we'll use the delete key to delete that and we'll go back into the clip art tab and then working our way down our folder list we have another folder called textures so at this time we've been told that they are not tileable Okay, so these are basically created from photographs. Uh, if we double click on one of those, um, you can see that it's basically a component created by a photograph, and these are perfect to use um, as part of backgrounds for signs. Okay, so you've got access to those as well. So let's just delete that component and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the CRV 3D files that are included um, with your software and look at some of the special things that are um, available to you to use within the actual file itself. So at the top here let's go and open an existing file. So in the clip art folders I'm going into ribbons and banners and um, we'll just take ribbon 1 for example we'll open that up. Okay, so here we can see we've got um, the grayscale of the ribbon. Let's just tile our windows and we can see that there. If we go into the modeling tab we can see that we've got a component here called ribbon parts safe and we have a component here called ribbon one group baked. Okay, so we just undraw the safe one. So here we've got a ribbon component that is complete. Okay, so that is it as a whole. If we undraw that, we have the same component. But again, we can see that plus sign here. It's telling us it's a group. And so if we right click on the group and use the option here to ungroup, we can see how our ribbon was actually created. Now not only can we see the components, how they were created, but we also have access to the layers that were used to create the ribbon. Okay, So we can see we have a layer here called sweep vectors and we have a layer called outline vectors. Okay, So the sweep vectors represent the um, two rail sweeps that were used to create the shapes and then the outline vectors are the vectors that we use to crop those components to to create uh, these final shapes. 
Now, if you haven't already watched the banners tutorial on how to create um, banners such as the one that you can see here, then I recommend that you go ahead and watch that. You can search for banners in the tutorial browser and that should load up from there. Okay, so we can see the vectors and we can see how our components are made up. So let's just undraw the right group and then go to the left group and then again right click and then use the ungroup option here. We can see uh, each one of these components represents a fold. And then we've obviously mirrored that fold over to the right and then basically created a component using this tool here uh, to create um, one that is a representation of everything that we can see in the 3D view and it may have also been sculpted just to finish that off. One final file that I'd like to show you if we just open um, search through here is the weaves. Okay, so we've got a weaves folder here. I'm just going to take weave one like so. No, don't want to save those changes. So this CRV 3D folder doesn't actually contain any components. If we go to the Modern tab, we can see we don't have anything there. If we go to the Clip Art tab, go locate to the same folder, we've got Weaves, we can actually access um, the actual Clip Art created from these vectors uh, in the Clip Art tab. Now what's special about the actual CRV 3D file is that we can create variants of uh, this weave shape. Now if we go to our Layers tab, you can see here we have the Weave Path, okay? So this is basically the vectors that we use with cross-sections, okay? So these are the three different cross-sections and we would have used the Extrude and Weave tool uh, to create the model that you can see here, okay? So Weave 1 is basically this profile, Weave 2 is this profile, and then Weave 3 is this profile here. But, like I say, what's special about the actual CLV 3D file is that we could look at creating alternate paths. So let's undraw that weave path. And then here you can see we have this woven path here. We could look at this one that just kind of flattens off at the edges. We've got this one here, this one here and this one also. So there's lots of vectors there uh, for you to make use of to create even more clip art. And so that really concludes this overview to the clip art that is included with Aspire.